Amarola wins in an upset, and his Truex back to form. Let's talk about it today on Race Review. Hey, what's up, guys? Hope you're all having a wonderful wonderful day, night, whatever time it is that you're watching this. You know, this is Barncat here talking about Sonoma Raceway Weekend for the NASCAR our Xfinity and Cup Series this week. Week before their, no, their, I guess they're off week since they're going to be changing broadcasts from Fox to NBC. So in the Xfinity Series, I know it's pretty cup-heavy. There are seven cup drivers, well, eight double-header guys, if you count Josh Balicki since he's running uh, for the Xfinity Series points. So uh, there was eight double-header guys, as in the top four were, or no, cup guys, with as with Eric Amarola winning, Larson finished, in, no, Larson finished third, A.J. Allmendinger finished second, and Ty Gibbs finished in fourth, with Parker Quigman being the first Xfinity regular and ended up finishing out in the top five. Now this race, it was a fairly... It was a very clean race. You know, since this was a road course, we had no stage caution. So, oh no, Larson dominated the race. I'm correct here. He led 53 laps, laps on the day. You no, know, I think AJ led. I don't remember how many laps AJ led. I think, yeah, no one on lock. He pretty much fought behind Kyle about the majority of the race. Race there. You no, know, it's like once Kyle got going, Kyle was gone. You no, know, I think at one point the lead, his lead was like eight seconds. Seconds, I believe. I mean, like eight seconds around Sonoma. That's a no. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it, it it's a bit of a far gap from um first to second place there. Like I said, it was a clean race. No, there was like two cautions on the day. The first caution was for for uh, Josh Berry. I think he might have like a was like a fuel pump problem. Like he stopped like right at the end of stage one in the race. So uh, that bundled them all back up. So I guess you can say we did have a stage break, but it wasn't really planned. So anyway, I said back, and when all the race got resumed, no, it was going, going, going. Oh, you know, I said Larson first, Dinger second, and Ty Gibbs was third. And with the mixture of like, like Austin Hill was up there for a little bit. You no, know, like he was a fairly a contender throughout the majority of the race. Race no in fourth, but obviously, no one's gonna beat the Cup guys, right? Right. So basically, whoever if you think about it, whoever was the highest Xfinity winner, they won the race in their mind, since no, they were the highest out of the Cup guys. Guys racing. So, so I anyway, know we ended up getting another caution. I think I saw this for like Jeffrey Earnhardt. I don't remember exactly what happened to Jeffrey, but he ended up, I don't know, being involved in a wreck. Wreck was said accident. And so I don't remember how it was. So they ended up all, you know, they go and getting uh, tires. You no, know, Larson, Dinger, uh, Gibbs, and a whole, whole handful of other guys. They went and got tires. All right, as well, uh, the 28 car of Eric Amarola. And a said a handful of others ended up staying out, and that was the key for for Eric. Eric ended up no lead the last 15 laps of the race to go on to win the race and hold off both Dinger and well, AJ Allmendinger and Kyle Larson, which in a, in a shocking in way, uh, Kyle Larson ended up making a mistake by hitting the tire bundle going through turn 11, which is a I guess it's it's not not say it's rare, but it's not unco- not common though, as we saw. Oh uh, no! In the Cup Series race, no, Corey LaJoy hit it once. On so, like I said, no, obviously an odd mistake, especially from Kyle Larson. He, he got again, and no, last year Kyle made a fair amount of mistakes in the Cup Series, and then no, so this kind of just adds on to it. But you know, hu- human error, I guess. So I don't know what else you want me to say. But anyway, like I said, this was no a big win for Eric Amarola. No, it's his fourth in the Xfinity Series for. First in, uh, on a road course, I believe it was. Yeah, it was first on the road course at Sonoma. Then he won, I think, what? Once at Daytona. Once at Talladega. And the Af- and the uh, Astrak race. Race I saw someone call. No, the race at Milwaukee in 2007 when he was Joe Gibbs Racing's development driver. No, and he started the race at Milwaukee. Now, where Denny Hamlin ended up finishing the race. But since, no, Eric started the race, he got credit for the victory. So... You know, congratulations to Eric Amarola and for RSS Racing. No, that was their first win, win no for that team. Even I know Ryan Sieg's come close a few times, but you know, obviously no big for them. No, even though it was also a Stewart Haas prepared race car. I saw a picture from uh, Brockbeard. You know that this was a I guess an, an old Riley Herbst chassis, I believe it was. So, oh, and like again, congratulations to Eric Amarola and and uh, RSS Racing. I was going to talk about the Cup race here now. Cup race. About the same as the Xfinity race, it was fair, fairly clean, no no stage cautions, so, oh no, everybody, you know, once they got spread out, you no, know, they got spread out, you know, like, like, you no, know, it was pretty much a dominant day for the Joe Gibbs guys, you no, know, 
Uh, Martin Truex Jr., he led 51 laps. Uh, Denny Hamlin led 33 laps. Uh, Kyle Busch was a contender, too. No, he led a handful amount of laps. And obviously, I know, like, I'm, Michael McDowell was very competitive, too. You know, I want to shout out to Michael McDowell. No, I know he didn't have the result that, no, he felt like he deserved. But, no, he, you know, had, he had a chance. No, I felt like he could have been a contender to win that race. Race with him, no, being, because he was passing cars, cars throughout the race. And no, with him being, no, I guess the road course ace. Well, not an ace, but, no, road course course expert and you know like with what front row has been doing all year long no, with such improvements no just like you know michael could have been could have won that race have some things went his way but anyway yeah so yeah, so oh no it said denny hammond led a good maturity of the race and martin Truex jr actually was able to pass denny like you know later on in the race okay so that was kind of a shock because seemed like last year you know like it was really hard to pass Ask guys, no, around the racetrack. So, I mean, just like once you got behind somebody, you couldn't really, you know, get around them. But, no, it was nice to see, you know, there was like, it would do some passing you know, on that track. But, you know, obviously, you know, people are going to complain about you know, the package. I mean, it's it's whatever. So, oh, I mean, you know, just, like I said, you know, Dom and Dave, I, I know, JGR and are in the whole 19 team. You know, they led the majority of the laps and have said, you know, Good for MTJ, you know, second career win. When well, I second career win, second win of the season for, for, for those guys. I, like I said, you no, know, it was a very clean race. Race, you no, know, there's two cautions. You no, know, one for a uncontrolled tire by uh, Zane Smith. Zane Smith was in the 38 this week. You no, know, not ended up rolling out near uh, the other side of the pit road. Or, no, on the other side of the pit wall, so I had to throw a caution because like, it was in a danger zone. And then the uh, second caution was for Denny Hamlin. You no, know, he ended up bouncing off the inside wall while going through like that little like turn twelve kink there, and then he ended up spinning out. So I mean that was a good day gone bad for Denny Hamlin. Unfortunately, you no, know, he finished last. You no, know, that wasn't the result that he should have got. But like I said, with Kyle Larson in the tire bundle, no human error. No, no, it happens. So I mean. No, it is what it is, I guess. So is Truex back to form? Or, well, say like who knows? Like who knows? He, he might not even lost his form. Let me, see, or, or let me put my glasses on so I can read it for you here. Here, so in 2022, no, obviously, you know, he had zero wins, four top fives, 15 top tens. He led 572 laps with an average finish of 14.9. And without the playoffs, no, he won't finish seventh in the standings. Ending so, but obviously with the playoffs, no, he ended up finishing 17th. So obviously. Was not a good year for for Martin, Martin. But no, if we look at this year, no, he's got two wins. He he has five top fives. He's already over his top fives from last year. Eight top tens. So he's he's about halfway over his top tens from last year. Four hundred thirty four laps led, which is if I don't, I ain't doing the math right now. But no, no, it's about uh, by the time of the end of this year, no, he already overlaps his laps led last year with it right now with an average finish of 11.4 with only 16 races in the season and not only that right now he's first in the championship he's 13 points ahead of william byron iron right now so like i said like is Truex back and like who knows like he might have him he and i never left that's really i said it was just an like an off year no like remember kevin harvick last year or not last year year no 2021 no yeah he was competitive but he didn't win once once in 2020 while in 2020 he won nine times um, so it was just like an up and down year. Obviously, you no, know, but Truex, you no, know, talking about how much longer will he be around for? The answer to that is who knows. So, well, e- either way, no, obviously, you no, know, Martin's going to make the most out of this year. So, uh, hopefully, you no, know, see how the year ends for Martin and, and the whole JGR 19 team.